Hello and welcome. This is Self-Control, How to Build a Better Life, the podcast that will inspire you to take control of your mind and your mindset to go forward and build the life that you want to live, the life that you deserve to live. Today's episode, if you struggle with the inability to focus, the inability to concentrate, you have low energy, perhaps you even have volatile mood with mood swings, I want to present to you one concept, one reason why this may be the case. We'll identify some spots in my life and maybe in your life uh, where we can pinpoint the causes and work on some solutions. So if you're ready for a better life, let's go. So let's talk about some of these symptoms specifically before we get into the causes and the solutions. You know, if you have the inability or you find within yourself the inability to concentrate and focus to perform you know normal daily tasks right like your your objectives that you need to do at work uh, you know cleaning around the house uh, addressing perhaps uh, an issue with your car or your property or if you even find it hard to find the will to start a conversation with someone close to you perhaps you feel restless you feel indecisive you elicit poor judgment you know you, you do things and then you look back and you say what What was I thinking? Where was my mind? What was I doing? What was I thinking? Perhaps you make careless mistakes. Or if you perhaps feel anxious. You know, if you're keyed up and you're worried about the future, the future's coming down the pipe and you're not sure if you like the look of it and you're not sure what you should do. Or perhaps you notice by the same token, a lack of motivation, right? We talked about the inability to start a conversation, the inability to go out into the world and and do the things that you know you need to do. Any of these things resonate with you, I can tell you they resonated with me too. There's still things that I deal with. I think it's time for me and you, because I have to say I was writing this podcast and then I was easier able to identify how I'm doing these things in my life. So it's time for me and for you to address some of the activities and the behaviors that are causing this low energy, poor focus, or volatile mood, or the mood that we don't want to be in, right? It's time to address them. It's time to identify where it's coming from and start working on some solutions. But I do need to say, of course, that this show is not medical advice, right? If if any of these symptoms resonate with you, um, this is not necessarily the silver bullet or the be-all, end-all, right? Um, there may be a medical issue. You know, you may have an issue with, with diet, with sleep, with physical activity, uh, with trauma that's happened in your life, with you may be deficient in one thing or another. I, don't, I know I'm deficient in <laughs> some things myself. But again, this is not medical advice. This is an offering to you on the level of spirit, on mind, on mindset, to identify places where you are in fact consuming more than you're producing and you're silencing your inner voice. So if this resonates with you, this is not medical advice. This is, let's say, me, oh, I don't want to call it preaching, but it's It's an examination of my own spirit that I hope you'll find useful as well. So let's dig in. So I've identified a couple of things in my life, behaviors, let's say, related to consumption that have led to uh, what I would call poor focus, uh, a lack of mindfulness, right? And over time has led to a a withdrawal or a, a reduction in my mood. It's essentially made me into something or into a person that I didn't necessarily like hanging out with. And you really should get to enjoy hanging out with yourself, shouldn't you? You're <laughs> you're there all the time with yourself, so you might as well make it somebody that you want to be with. I've identified a handful of behaviors related to consumption. Let's just get right to it. Number one, this is not going to blow anybody's mind. We all love it. We all hate it. We all know it. We all use it. Social media. I think it's pretty obvious if you're on social media, you're aware in the way that it um, is built to grab your attention and to keep your attention, but it doesn't require a whole lot of focus from you, does it? Now, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of great information on social media. You know, you can find new podcasts on social media. You can meet new people. You can be exposed to new ideas. This is not me coming down from the mountain and preaching to people to not be on social media. You'd be a fool to disconnect from the culture totally, I think. But I think we need to be aware of the way in which social media does not require us to focus on any one thing for too long, right? So think about that. It's It takes you a few seconds to read a tweet. It takes you a few seconds to scroll your friend's Instagram post and go, hmm. It takes you 
what, a few seconds and then it's four in the morning to, to get going on the TikTok, uh, <laughs> the TikTok train of scrolling videos. Um, you name it. It takes you a few seconds to read your aunt's racist post on Facebook. Um, but it doesn't really require you to focus or think too much about any one thing. And so my understanding here is that this does have to do with the, the neurochemical dopamine. And I'm going to do my best to stay away from any kind of biological scientific explanation of any of this stuff because I'm not qualified to do it. But suffice it to say, uh, within us as human beings exists the drive to keep finding novel stimuli, keep finding something new that may be beneficial. That was what drove us as hunters back in the day when we had to hunt for our own survival. And now here we are just hunting for the next sexy picture, the next picture of the vacation we want to take, you know, the next interesting tweet, the next um, funny joke, the next meme, right? And so we've conditioned ourselves in a way to to not have to focus on anything and to be keep being presented with new and interesting stimulus with, with very little effort. So I would just say to you that because of that ecosystem, the social media ecosystem that we're all in, we are conditioning ourselves to keep seeking, keep seeking, but to not ever really have to focus. And so if you have problems with focus, you might want to think first about how little focusing you're doing in your life generally. And I would point to social media as the number one sort of perpetrator or the number one arena in which our focus is stripped from us. Okay, the second media consumption that I've identified that I think really uh, ruins our focus and in, in fact can sort of tamp down or silence our inner voice, podcasts. And I realize the irony of this. Again, I'm not going to tell you to stop listening to podcasts. Please don't stop listening to podcasts. I need you. <laughs> but again, you'd be a fool. You'd be a fool to completely disconnect from the culture. You would be an even bigger fool though. And I would be a fool too. In fact, I was a fool uh, a couple days ago. Uh, <laughs> and I'll get into that. You would be an even bigger fool if you mindlessly consumed these podcasts, these social media posts without, or let's say while letting it drown out your inner voice while refusing to focus or refusing to apply your own life experience to what you're consuming. So here's my thought on podcasts. They require what I would call passive consumption. You know, you could focus very loosely on what's being said, just like you're doing right now. But what I've come to find for myself was that when I'm listening to intelligent, you know, experts talk about things, that if I can follow along with what they're saying, you know, a certain percentage of the time or a certain percentage of what's being covered, I begin to actually fool myself into thinking that I too am that intelligent, that I, that I too understand what's being said, that as if I live these things and drew these conclusions on my own. I think that's really dangerous because I don't fully understand the concept. Half the stuff that I'm hearing I have never heard of before. This concept is being so well dictated to me and I'm standing there or sitting there passively believing that, wow, aren't I smart? So I'll give you a quick example. A few weeks ago, I listened to an episode of the Tim Ferriss podcast and he had Dr. Andrew Huberman on there. And so much of that interview that I could bear to listen to was uh, Huberman who, very smart guy, of course, he's a biologist. He understands how the body works and the brain works on a deep, deep level. But so much of the interview was him telling Tim Ferriss, uh, this is what I eat, this is how I exercise. I, I, I didn't even continue with it. I saw they got into fertility, they got into psychedelics, whatever. Here, on the one hand, there was a ton of great stuff. And I'm not putting down Huberman, I'm not putting down Tim Ferriss. Those guys have done a lot of work in this very space. And, and I found a lot of what was said useful or interesting, right? I'm not above listening to podcasts, don't get me wrong. But on the one hand, it's like I'm listening to this guy just go on and on about how he lives his life, what he eats, how he exercises, why he exercises, all this stuff he knows. And on one hand, I think, okay, some of that's interesting. I can apply that to, to, to some area of my life. On the other hand, I find myself saying, who f cares? Right? Like, let me put it to you this way. If you're willing to listen to somebody else talk about what they eat or how they exercise or how they parent or how they carry themselves in business, in relationships, in whatever pursuit for three, four, six, eight, 12 hours a week, 
And yet I'm aware, of course, that I'm doing that. I am one of these talking head voices. I'm very aware of what's going on right now. I'm deconstructing the podcast. If you're willing to listen to somebody talk, talk, talk about their own life for hours on end, and you're not putting an equal or greater amount of that work into your own life, right? If you're not running those experiments on yourself, if you're not applying the lessons that you're hearing to your own life, you really aren't doing anything. And after a certain point, it's just mental masturbation. And again, I have to stress, I'm not above it. I, I've done it myself. I struggle with it myself. I let me just tell you that after I wrote the notes for this podcast, this podcast that I'm going on right now, that I'm reciting right now, I said, well, I better make dinner. What should I listen to? Oh my God, what a fraud I am. What a fraud. I just spent an hour thinking about why people shouldn't always be listening to podcasts and listening to music and scrolling social media. And I myself am addicted to it. So if you struggle with poor focus, it could be a sign of a social media or a podcast or a consumption addiction, right? We've become so attuned to being told or to being shown a life other than our own without putting into practice the actual hard work of having that life for ourselves without actually listening to our own thoughts as deeply as we listen to the thoughts of others. You know, I think in a sense we've been fooled, right, into thinking that I'm living that life or I'm having these thoughts, right? It's not unlike watching a movie or reading a fantasy novel, right? We've been fooled into thinking. We've projected ourselves into these roles, into these thoughts, into these experiences without ever, ever actually done the hard work of having the experience. And of course that's inviting. We, we all know that people love movies and fantasy and all these sorts of things. But again, if you struggle with focus, if you struggle with perhaps feeling energized about life, enthused about life, if you don't feel so great about your own life, you may want to examine how much time you're spending projecting that life of yours into the life and into the thoughts of somebody else. The key here is that we're listening and we're observing and we're being talked to by authority. And when it comes to, let's say, medical advice, scientific advice, uh, advice on any certain topic, it doesn't hurt to listen to the experts, but Really, it's worrisome when we think about diet or, or any other angle of self-development to just be dictated to from on high by some biologist, psychologist, talking head, commentator, and not putting the same amount of practice into our own life. And so I think that when it comes to low energy or, or volatile mood, you know, mood swings, you're, you're down, you don't feel great about going forward in life. These could actually, in fact, be the symptoms of this consumption addiction, right? Right. If you feel like when you can't be scrolling social media for whatever reason, or you're in the, the dreaded uh, podcast desert, right? You know, when your favorite episode, your favorite shows are in between episodes. You know, if you feel that annoyance, if you feel that, uh, what am I doing? Uh, what should I do? That unfocusedness, that <clears throat> resistance to concentrating, just be aware there. And again, I'm speaking to myself here. There's an addiction there to consumption. What that's led to is a lack of mindfulness and a lack of listening to our inner voice. So as I said, you know, I've, I've been there. I'm struggling with it myself right now. I struggled with it last night when I realized just how deep it, it ran for me. My instant reflex was to start cooking and put on a podcast, to sit down and eat and look at my phone. If you struggle, as I do, to do these sort of menial everyday tasks without a podcast, without TV, without social media, without the voice of another person by your side, realize that that is a refusal to be, to be mindful. And it's a refusal to engage with life. And what I found is that you're looking for a better life, engage with the life that you have. And I really do think too that on a spiritual level, right, that, that feeling of annoyance or that, that feeling of sadness or that feeling of just blah, what is the point of life? What am I doing? What does it really matter? Let me fire on a TV show and not think about it. All those, that emotional response to those feelings, that could be your inner voice crying out, crying out to actually live your life rather than just keep observing others and consuming the thoughts of others. It's like, Let's observe me. Let's consume the thoughts or let's say, let's produce the thoughts of me. And so this brings us to our solutions. The solution to being an avid consumer is to start gradually as best you can becoming a producer. I can understand, sure, that you like to listen to podcasts on your commute or you like to listen to 
podcast when you're uh, doing those menial tasks we talked about, cooking, cleaning. Maybe there's a certain self-development podcast that you're really enjoying. Again, I'm not saying to not support these producers that you value, right? We as producers do value the consumer on some level, but realize that in those moments when you're being fed the ideas of another person, there too is an is at least an indication that you are not working on your inner voice, right? Unless you're, I suppose, constantly critically evaluating every single thing that that person like me is saying, you are likely just going into a passive mode. I believe, uh, you know, a friend of mine, Jahan, who was on the show a while ago, talks about how the forebrain sort of shuts down when we get into consuming media. And that's how thoughts can just sort of passively enter our mind without much resistance by our critical faculties. So challenge yourself there. Could you drive to and from work one day a week without the noise of a podcast or of music or without checking Twitter at every red light? You know, I think that if the idea of being with your own thoughts or being in silence, if that scares you, uh, that's a major, major invitation to, to actually grapple with that, right? To realize that you can, you can, you can remove the emotional connection to those thoughts that you're scared of and you can think those thoughts through. And I would say that in those dark thoughts that scare you is the great challenge of your life, is the place where you need to go to begin to do the work. You know, that's where your inner voice is calling you. And I think that constantly listening to podcasts, constantly listening to music, scrolling social media, watching streaming, watching Netflix, watching YouTube, it's noise. And your inner voice is crying out from within and it's not being heard. So again, become a producer of your own thoughts. You know, I've spoke a lot on this show about journaling. You can go back and find some of those episodes. But again, you struggle with focus. Here's an exercise in focus. Sit down and write a page about what you did today, how you were feeling, what you were thinking, what you want to do tomorrow, right? Hell, you could even start a podcast, start a blog, start a vlog, start a TikTok, start an Instagram, right? Like start making social media work for you instead of just suck your energy, right? Get your thoughts out there. You're not going to get a million followers overnight. Maybe you will. God bless you if you do. It's not going to be great content. Maybe it will be. And in that case, it's like, well, you should have been doing it all along. But, you know, should's a dirty word. But let's just, let's get one thing straight. You struggle to focus. It's time to start focusing on the one thing that I would say truly matters. And that is your thoughts and your inner voice. Okay. Become a producer. Become the storyteller of your own life. Second solution, I've kind of been working my way around it here, is this idea of mindfulness. Realize that when you're being inundated with the voices and the thoughts of another person through podcasts, uh, through social media, through, through television, radio, whatever, whatever media we're talking about, all this external noise, right? There's a lack there, right? There's a lack there of internal noise, right? Of, of internal signal, of, of looking within. And so last night, as I said, when I struggled to cook and eat supper without somebody talking in my ear, t telling me jokes. I realized, look, here's a chance. I'm standing at the stove watching two or three different things go. That in itself is beautiful. I should enjoy the fact that I even have the resources to do this for myself. And then I can start thinking, well, how's my body feel? Am I breathing okay? You know, for me, it's like I always struggle with that deep diaphragmatic mindful breathing. Um, quite often I'm, I'm harboring physical tension. I have poor posture. I'm slumping. I'm slouching. I'm contracting my diaphragm, contracting the pelvic floor. No wonder I don't feel very good. I'm being yelled at in my ears by somebody I've never met. And I'm standing there hunched over the stove, not paying attention to how I cook my meals. You know, it's worth thinking about. It's worth thinking about all these things that we do and what they take us away from. And I think what this show would challenge you to do is, if you do feel like you're struggling, you know, if you do feel like a better life is possible, dive in on the life that you live. You don't have to make major changes. You don't have to really change anything that you do or anywhere that you are. Change how you be when you're there. Be engaged. Be full. Be you. Think your thoughts. Bring your own presence, your own spirit to the moment. So again, if you're struggling with poor focus, poor attention, poor concentration, low energy, volatile moods. Examine how much consumption of outside ideas you're doing in your life and how that may have ruined your ability to focus, how that may have silenced your inside, your, your inside voice, silenced your inner voice. The inside voice was what you had to use at school. 
and your inner voice is using its inside voice, for God's sake. Let your inside, I'm going to get it. Let your inner voice use its outside voice. How about that? I should put that on a t-shirt and sell it. Let your inner voice use its outside voice. Think about your own thoughts. Take away the outside noise and see what's going on internally, physically, spiritually. You'll find that when you're forced to focus on who you are, your focus in other areas of life improve. When you start to get to know yourself, your love for life will grow. When you start to develop passions, when you start to listen to what that inner voice dictates you to do, you'll begin to find you have all the energy in the world to live the life that you want to live. So give it a shot. doesn't have to be every single day, all at once, one day a week. Take out the headphones, put away the phone, and just cook the meal, clean the toilet, walk the dog, and see what's going on inside. That's the beginning of the most important conversation you can have and the most important relationship you can have with yourself. That's my challenge to you, but really, I'm just looking at a mirror because that's my challenge to me too. So let's do it together. And until we speak again, please remember that better is possible. Nice one. Really good, really good.